What's going on on my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. Continuing on in my series of David Fincher reviews. In today's video, I'm taking a look at his very well acclaimed, groundbreaking 1995 classic, Seven. Although, I really hate these stylized titles, you guys. I don't like it when they put, like, numbers in the middle of words. It's so dumb. It's not seven anymore. It's s seven in. That's just as bad as Fant Four Stick. Oh well, carry on. So Seven was released in 1995, and this was the film that put David Fincher on the map. His previous film, Alien 3, did not go over well by a lot of fans. Even David Fincher has publicly disowned the film because of the studio interference that came from the theatrical cut of the film. I just did a review where I talked about the assembly cut, and it's a much more watchable film now because it's closer to David Fincher's vision. And if you want a better version of Alien 3, I suggest you watch that cut. But anyway, Seven was the movie that did bring David Fincher on the map. This one was critically acclaimed. This was one of the biggest hits of that year, which was my birth year, by the way. And this was the one that led to David Fincher being the acclaimed, well-known director that he is today. So, this was a game changer for David Fincher. This is a movie that I've already reviewed this year, actually. I did a collab video with Anthony A. Perez over on his channel. It was the first collab we ever did, and we both talked about Seven, uh, and I ended up scratching the movie off on the Hunter Movies bucket list over on his video. If you want to see that collab video, I will leave a link in the description below if you want to see both of our takes on this classic film. I'm reviewing it again for the David Fincher series. Also, I haven't done an actual review of Seven on my channel, so here you go if you want to see my review of this film on my channel. So what did I think of Seven? Is it a masterpiece? Is it overhyped? What did I think of this movie? Let's find out together. So Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman star in this searing psychological thriller about two detectives on the trail of a vicious serial killer who chooses his victims according to the seven deadly sins. And besides Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman, this movie also stars Gwyneth Paltrow, John C. McGinley, Richard Roundtree, Arlie Ernie, and Kevin Spacey. Seven is a crazy movie. I really, really love this film. A lot of it has to do with how creative the premise is. You see a lot of these detective thrillers that pop up every now and then. A lot of them feel a little mundane and run of the mill. But David Fincher brings so much life into this genre. And a lot of it having to do with the premise where the serial killer is killing people based on the seven deadly sins. That is such a creative premise and you can do a lot of wild and crazy things with the seven deadly sins. I mean even thanks to this cover art you got the list of seven deadly sins on here because there's so much of them that it's hard to keep track. You got gluttony, greed, sloth, envy, wrath, pride, and lust. You can do a whole lot with those seven deadly sins and the way how gruesome the deaths are in this movie, what this serial killer does, or as we call him John Doe because we don't know his name. This is a crazy premise that is executed to the fullest with somebody with such a genius mind like David Fincher who takes some dark turns with this material. There's a lot of really gruesome imagery with some of the kills in this movie that are a little hard to watch at times and every time I watch the film some of the, the imagery in this really makes my skin crawl because it's that freaky of a movie but even with all that there's still some really fun aspects with the film a lot of it having to do with that dynamic between Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman as the two detectives I love the back and forth that they do have throughout the film. Brad Pitt plays the rookie detective, is more idealistic in his job. 
he's a little bit more optimistic in what he does because he enjoys what he's doing. Uh, Morgan Freeman, on the other hand, he's the more experienced detective. He's seen a lot of crazy stuff go down. Uh, some of the violence and chaos that goes on in these bigger cities and he's kind of been fed up with his job and he's ready to retire he's ready to move on and he's the one that's a lot more cynical in his job compared to Brad Pitt's character who's who's fresh on the job and he's wanting to really crack down this case and he seems like he's enjoying the job I love the back and forth that they do have throughout this film and it's a very interesting contrast and it grows into this really cool little friendship that actually is kind of the heart of Seven in a way while also being this very insane intense pulse pounding thriller with a lot of disturbing imagery in there. The performances in Seven are all very remarkable. I love Brad Pitt, I love Morgan Freeman, Gwyneth Paltrow is in this film who plays the wife of Brad Pitt's character. She kind of plays a pivotal role in all of this. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil that, of course, if you have not seen Seven, but man, she does play a pivotal part in Seven. That's all I'm gonna say. She definitely gives a pretty good performance. I think it's one of her earliest roles. There's other actors that pop in there too. You don't really see much of Arlie Ermey or Richard Roundtree, even though they're really good actors, but for what they're given, they do really good jobs in the role. They kind of help elevate the strength of the cast, even though you don't really get much of them. But then we gotta talk about John Doe. Here he is played by Kevin Spacey. Kind of an infamous actor nowadays. Um, not too many people want to talk about Kevin Spacey. Some of the personal scandals that have really hurt his career. In more recent years, I think a lot of people want to throw him off to the side, like forget he ever existed. But I'm one of those separate the art from the artist type of guys when it comes to uh, watching movies and stuff, where even if somebody has a shady past, uh, I'm still going to at least enjoy their work as an actor or whatever if the movie is so good. I don't believe in that cancel culture stuff, even though I acknowledge the flaws of a lot of these people. I'm one of those that's like, hey, if you're really good at a movie, I'm going to acknowledge that. And Kevin Spacey, for a while, was considered one of the best actors of our generation. And he does a really good job in Seven, so I'm not going to take that away from him. He is fantastic as John Doe. One of the creepiest performances in his entire career. Like, if, once Kevin Spacey enters the room, in the third act of the film. The movie was already good. And then once he shows up, the movie just went from just a really rock solid movie to one of the best movies I've ever seen. That third act of Seven is crazy awesome. Like, once the movie, like, do you think the movie is going in one direction, right? With all the Seven Deadly Sins and how he's killing all these people off because he's kind of like this religious fanatic who hates all these people doing these terrible things and he's just killing them off to he thinks he's doing it for a higher power god in this case very crazy messed up thing to do then you get to the climax of the film where there's two deadly sins left that haven't been addressed yet and the way this movie ends is wow i have no idea who was the brains behind this crazy ending. Let me look here real quick. I, I don't know if David Fincher did he write this or not. No, he did not write this. Uh, according to here, it's Andrew Kevin Walker who wrote the script along with David Fincher directing. How they came up with this ending is beyond insane, but it's a very infamous ending that actually helps elevate the movie even more. It takes it on a completely unpredictable turn and it's one of those where it's a twist ending that made me love the movie even more it's not like this out of left field twist ending that ruins the film it's one of those where like oh this is messed up and it's one of the craziest things that i've ever seen in a movie uh obviously you probably know the memes with Brad Pitt going, what's in the box, what's in the box? I'm not gonna say what's in the box, but 
Once you know what's in the box. Oh, you'll never think of Seven the same way again. It is a crazy good movie. I love Seven. To date of all what I've seen of David Fincher, this is my favorite David Fincher film so far. Going into this series, there's a lot of well-known David Fincher films I haven't seen before. That I'm excited to dive into for the first time. Like I've never seen Zodiac. I've never seen Gone Girl, I've never seen Benjamin Button or The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. The only ones I've seen have been this, Alien 3, Fight Club, and The Social Network, which I'm excited about revisiting the ones that I've seen. But there's a lot of David Fincher films in this series that I have not seen. I'm curious if Seven is still going to be my favorite David Fincher film or some of these others that I haven't seen is going to top it, but for now, Seven is flat out phenomenal. It takes some dark, twisted turns that I think even Alfred Hitchcock, who kind of helped challenge the censors back in the day with something like Psycho, I think he would be proud of what David Fincher did with Seven. Seven is just an ingenious thriller with a crazy premise, some really good performances, and a final twist at the end, which is just the icing on the cake. It's a movie that's very entertaining at times, while also dark and twisted, and definitely leaves you thinking by the end. Seven is an insane thrill ride, one of the best in its genre by far, and I'm gonna give the film a five out of five stars, and on the 100 point scale, it's getting a 100 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Seven as part of my David Fincher director series where I review his complete filmography from his directing debut to his most recent film. I'm doing this mainly because his new film, Mank, is coming out in December on Netflix. I don't know if I'll have time to watch all the Fincher films before Mank comes out, but I do still plan on watching all the David Fincher films in chronological order and build up to Mank, which I'm hearing, which I'm hoping is a really good film. The trailer looks great. I'm excited to check out that film for myself. I got a lot more David Fincher reviews to come, so if you're a fan of David Fincher, I will leave a link in the description below for a playlist where you can catch up on the other David Fincher reviews. I just started this series, and the only other David Fincher film I've reviewed is Alien 3. I got a lot more David Fincher reviews to come, so be on the lookout for more videos in the near future, and you can click the subscribe button and notification bell where you can be notified of future Damon Fincher reviews. Join me next time where I'll be tackling The Game, which is apparently one of the director's more underrated films. All I know is Michael Douglas is in it, so I'm excited to see where The Game is going to take me, especially considering how much I really dug Seven. So be on the lookout for that review coming very, very soon. But if you've seen Seven, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, we'd be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope y'all have an amazing day. God bless, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!